undaunted. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, in the Amplified Bible, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is completed, it is accomplished, and my victory is abiding. Undaunted means not intimidated or discouraged by difficulty, danger, or disappointment. And Jesus Christ our Lord says to us today, there is hope even in your suffering. You may not be able to understand or you may not be able to make any sense of it, but there is hope. When your hope is in me, there is always hope because I am eternal. I am the word that became flesh. My word will never return void. It will always accomplish that for which it was sent. There are laws that have been put into place even before the beginning of time. And those laws govern the world. And you can be assured, my son, my daughter, that those laws are laws of justice, of righteousness, and of love, and of mercy. But I, I have to follow the instructions of my father too. I had to obey. I went to the cross knowing full well what I was doing. I did not allow anybody to talk me out of the cross. I gave my life freely, voluntarily, And that was the plan before the beginning of time. I will always fulfill the promises. And our Father in heaven, he is always faithful to complete everything that he has begun. His love for us is abundant and faithful at all times, bringing joy from your pain. We see that we are living in a very difficult world. Things are definitely not like they used to be when I was growing up. And we read in the headlines all the things that are happening and it is not hard to see that our world is on a downward spiral, downward slide. Political tensions, natural disasters, and disease outbreaks are escalating and more and more professed believers seem to be falling away from the faith. Many people have wondered whether these events are part of biblical prophecies. I think that I agree with most of the pastors that we are closer to the rapture and the tribulation than ever before. Four signs of the end times. One is the sign of deception. As we move towards the last days, Jesus said that there would be an increasing danger of deception by false teachers. Take heed, he said, that no one deceives you, for many will come. Many will come in my name, 
saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5. More and more people are searching for, for leaders to deliver them. They will seek mystics and religious leaders and religions made by men, seeking deeper knowledge and seeking deeper meaning to the world and to their lives. And the only meaning we can really look for that is any truth at all is the Lord and the Word of God. Deception is one of the greatest threats to the church today, but that is nothing new. The second sign of the end times is the signs of disputes among nations. Jesus warned his disciples that the end of the age would be marked by wars and rumors of wars with nations rising against each other. Matthew 24, 6-7 Division, dissension escalates and we can view it as the sign of end times, revelations, where people are becoming haters of God. There are more and more deaths. There are more and more things that are happening in this world. But Jesus said it. God said it in his word. There will be tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Be courageous. The third sign of the end times is the sign of devastation. Along with the deception and the disputes of the last days, Jesus warned, he warned of famines, pestilences, earthquakes. Matthew 24, 7. Even though God has blessed us with a fruitful, abundant planet, millions of people in the world face food insecurity and scarcity. And COVID-19 raised a global awareness of our vulnerability to novel diseases. But it isn't the only outbreak in our world today. There are many other plagues that are there are outbreaks in different parts of the world. We are witnessing an increase in the frequency and intensity of earthquakes. Just the other day, there was an earthquake in Turkey and Syria that 3,000 people disappeared. They died. They're under the rubble. Many children. My friend, there will be tribulations. There will be hard times. There will be suffering. And God does not create suffering. God does not create disasters. We came into a world that is sinful. And the earth is groaning because of sin. Once that serpent crawled into the garden and deceived Eve, and Eve gave her husband to eat, they both gave up their innocence. They both sacrificed the innocence and the purity of all humanity. So God does not create diseases. God does not create disasters. God does not create earthquakes. God does not create suffering. It is a natural order of things that we must suffer because if all was joy, if all that we knew was joy, how would we really and truly appreciate 
anything good if we had only good in the world. If everything was given to us in a silver platter, how would we know what kind of character we would have because we wouldn't have to work for things. We wouldn't have to strive for things or dream or, or have goals because everything has been handed to us. So we wouldn't know whether we, are, whether we are weak or whether we are strong or whether we have problems in a certain area because it, has, it would have been given to us. So the natural order of things is that there is good and there is bad. There is a God that is pure and holy and he is all love. And there is an enemy of our soul that wants to destroy the world and wants to destroy God's children. Just like all the characters in the animated films, there is a good, there is a good God, there is a good uh, character and there is a nemesis there is a an enemy because things have to be balanced and so as we think about these things that have been already written in the word of god and they are happening every single day all around us. Last year, there were so many deaths and not all the deaths were attributed to the COVID-19 or the vaccine. There were a lot of deaths in different areas. There were deaths due to COVID. There were deaths due to suicide. There were deaths due to other reasons drug addiction there were deaths that were inexplainable and yet we saw deaths in 2020 or 2020 21 and 22 like never before there will be tribulations and jesus said it in the word in john 16 33 he was clear that we could have courage. There will be times when, when you are going through painful emotions and you are in the valley of suffering and it feels as though it will never end. And at that time, in those times, we need to rely on Jesus and the promises that he made to us to give us the strength to have faith even when we are suffering. He is with us through it all. Though we may feel that we can't go on, Jesus is our strength and our hope is in him. And he says to us today, you have been, ho you have been saved and accepted by my sacrifice and it is my life and death and resurrection that is to remind you that you may endure pain and suffering on this earth, but it will not last forever. And my promises to you, my child, is that I will walk with you through the trials and tribulations of this world. Just be with me, the Lord says. Be with me. Rest in the hope that your suffering and your troubles will not last forever. Rest in the truth that the steadfast love of our Heavenly Father endures and that He will deliver you. Did you know that God has our tears in a bottle? Psalm 56 verse 8 says, Record my misery, list my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? 
And the Lord says to us today, my love and mercy are all consuming and never failing. I am with you. And your heavenly Father not only knows your sadness and pain, he knows your weariness and your wonderings, and he also collects every tear that falls. Every single teardrop that you have cried, he holds in the palm of his hand. They are recorded in his book for all eternity. And one day, every one of your tears will be wiped away. There will be no more pain and no more suffering, no more crying, and the joys to come will last forever. My child, sometimes there are no words. I understand that. And the Spirit will communicate to your heart the heart of the Father. My gift to you, my child, the Spirit, is a gift that will carry you through, uh, through all of the trials and tribulations until you see me face to face. The Spirit is your guide on this journey to lead you in the way that you should go, into paths of righteousness. And know this, my child, following me will not be easy but you will have all you need and more. The only thing I ask of you is to be courageous and do not fear. Be undaunted. You were created to love and worship your heavenly Father with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Your emotions are a part of your intense devotion to me. You were created to be emotional, so in your most intense moments, whether in despair or in joy or in tears or in sadness, I too am weeping. Your Father in heaven is weeping. My child, God understands. Know that your Heavenly Father's bottle of your tears also holds the promise of his blessings. Psalm 84, verse 8 through 12. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk blamelessly. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and we bless you for you are a good God. You are a merciful God, a God of compassions. Your word says in Lamentations that your mercies are new every morning. Every morning we have, we have an opportunity to do things different. With every sunrise, O oh God, we have a second chance, my Father. We recognize, Lord, that the earth is groin groaning with pain and with sadness because of all the sin, my Father. And we ask you forgiveness, O oh God, for every sin that we have ever committed in the past that we are committing now or ever commit because we will always be sinners, O oh God. The difference is that today we have you in our lives. We have your grace, we have your mercy. And you died on that cross and you paid for every sin that we, your children, would ever commit. My Father, we ask you, Lord, to give us strength every day. Cover us with your grace, my Father, so that even though we don't understand, even though we don't understand the workings and, and, and the way that the kingdom of heaven works and the laws, my Father, 
We don't understand because you, God, you see the beginning from the end. You are the Alpha, the Omega. You see everything, oh God. But we can only see, my Father, to the horizon, my God. But Lord, we are your children and you are our Creator and our God. And we know and we can trust that one day we will understand and one day we, you will tell us what we need to know, God. But for today, we are not going to reproach you. We are not, Lord God. We are not going to reproach the way that you do things, God, or judge you or get mad at you, my Father. No matter what we're going through in our life, my God, no matter what we're going through, God, we are going to stay close to you because better, my Father, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. My Father, there is no other place to go than in your presence and in your courts, my Father. Nothing in this world is better than you, my God. Nothing. There is nothing in this world that can compare to your love and to your grace and to your presence and to your amazing, amazing grace, my Father. And Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for blessing the people in Syria, blessing the people in Turkey, God. Bless everyone, my God, that has lost loved ones. Bless people that have gone through the earthquakes and the tornadoes and the hurricanes, my Father, that just happened uh, a few months ago here in Florida, my God. I just pray, my Father, for the people that have lost their homes, for the people that have lost their loved ones. I pray that you will, Father God, that you will strengthen us, that you will renew the strength of these people like an eagle, Lord God, that you will renew their faith, my Father, that you will, Father God, embrace them and love them. Send your people, send your angels, surround them with a hedge and wall of protection, Lord God. May they read the word, may they be encouraged, may they find refuge in you, my God. And may, Lord God, your love, Father God, be their shield and their sun in the midst of trials and tribulation. And may they always be undaunted, only mesmerized by the awe and the reverence and the amazing God that you are, our Father in heaven. Holy, holy, holy be thy name. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord God, amen and amen.